Welcome back to the Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Satisfactory, where today we will be creating our starter factory that will include all items up to modular frames. And I will be showing you the entire process so you can follow along with me if you choose to. So do me a huge favor, hit that like button so that this series can be shown to as many new players as possible. First, we are going to clean up this area and we're going to get rid of all of our solid biofuel production here, along with our biomass burners over here. And now that it's a little bit more clean, we can now start working on our starter factory. Now, there's a misconception of what a starter factory is. The starter factory happens to be everything that is fully needed before you start hitting steel. In this area right here, we have access to six normal iron nodes and if you're wondering where the sixth one is it's actually here they never took it out i don't know if it's a bug or what but we have access to it so i'm gonna use it if you use your scanner and you look for it it'll actually pop up on your map see there's two right here and it's actually showing you where it is but there's no visible indicator that there is one there it will work as a normal node so with these six nodes we have access to 360 iron ore per minute which allows us to make all of the iron products except for the 10 modular frames and for those we'll need to find more iron nodes and there are some not too far away from here we'll go get those later on so to start our little platform, we are going to want to pick a spot that pretty much clears all of these little hills right here. So we want to clear this rock too. So we are going to grab a four meter high foundation and we'll hold control in order to clear it. So I want to make sure that we are above this rock. So we ended up building a 12 by 12 platform. Now we're not going to be building our factory here. We're actually going to go up, but this platform will be the area where we can bring in our trucks or trains and it'll be underneath our actual factory. Now, what I like to do is I like to let the trains come into this area because later on we are going to have a big giant train network that will go around the entire map. And it's going to go right through this area and it'll most likely end at the bottom here. So I want to have enough space for the train. And knowing that a train station takes about six foundations of four meter high of height, we are going to go up six just to leave enough room here. We'll actually add a pillar on each one of these sides here, each one of the corners. And then we'll build another platform above this that will be slightly bigger. You want to make it so that it lines up exactly at the same height here. And then we'll just finish the platform. Now this platform is 12 by 18. So we just add an extra three columns on each one of these sides here. Now we'll need a way to bring up the belts up here and ourselves. So from here, we'll add about four foundation wide and we'll do two deep for now and we'll do the same thing above now our belts are gonna go up on this side now if we extend this side by just two foundations we can then build some catwalks to go up to the next level so we'll need to figure out how many items we actually need to bring with us we are going to need about eight smelters and 19 constructors for this basic floor so we want to make sure we have enough of that along with a bunch of extra reinforced iron plates in order to set up all the belts so we're gonna go and make sure we just have extra plates which we do so we don't really need more plates than that and we're gonna grab all of our reinforced iron plates so for the entire starter factory we are going to set up our conveyor lift holes here in the back We'll have a total of about five iron lines of 120 coming in here. And then we'll need two copper lines and one limestone line. Then we'll have one line of each of the quick wire and the, the um, quartz. Now, later on, we can, there's still some room here. We can add more belts if we deem it necessary. But for now, this is totally fine. We'll need three lifts on this floor, so we'll need them to be marked too, and we'll need them to make sure that the arrow is coming out this way. And we'll 
also take a copper and a concrete. So for the iron, we'll want to add some smelters and we'll make sure that it's starting in the third row here and that we are in the column, the last column of the, the belt lines right here. So we'll want to make sure we're roughly like this. And then we could go ahead and add the other three right next to it. From here, we'll have this line come in into the splitters. Into a splitter manifold line, like so. And we'll add Mark 1 belts between the splitters and the smelters. Everything else can be Mark 2 belts. Now, Mark 2 belts is overkill for some of these, but it is necessary for the very first one and for the line that is going to be coming out into the first splitter here. We'll set these to be doing iron ingots. And in front of them, we'll add six constructors. So, we'll add a constructor in front of the first one, two squares away. And then we'll just hold control and we'll place down a total of six more constructors. The first three constructors here can go straight into the constructor from the smelter using a Mark 1 belt. And then from this last smelter, we are going to add a splitter. And we'll add a splitter behind all of the other constructors. And from there, we just have to add Mark 1 belts between all the splitters and the constructors. And then this one is done. We'll set the first three constructors here to be doing some iron plates. And then the middle one will be doing some cast screws. But we only need 40 per minute. So we'll underclock it to 80%. And the last two will do iron rods. So one will be working at 100% efficiency. But the other one we want to underclock here to only provide 5 per minute for a total of 20. Now the reason we do this is because we have 30 ingots coming out of this smelter. Now the 30 are going to be using 10 for these screws. And then another 15 for this iron rod here. So for 25 and then five, the last five for the last iron rod constructor for a total of 30. Now from here, we just have to merge all of these together. So we'll put a merger in front of the third constructor with its output going forward. Then we'll add a merger in front of the other two constructors with their outputs heading towards that first merger. For the cast screws, we're just going to go straight out. So we do not need a merger here, but we do need a merger coming out of this before last constructor here. And we will belt into the merger this last constructor. Now, I like to add an extra merger because if ever I, I, I expand, it's already done for me. But you can just belt straight in if you want. It makes no difference. So our iron construction is complete. We just have to belt the outputs to where we want our storage to be. And we'll tackle that later on. And just as a recap here, we are sending a line of 120 of iron ore into a splitter manifold line here behind four smelters. The first three smelters go straight into three constructors doing iron plates. And these are being merged into the last merger here on the right. And then the last smelter splits into a splitter manifold line to feed three different constructors. The first one is doing cast screws underclock to 80% in order to only do 40 per minute. And the last two are doing iron rods. The last one being underclocked to 33.333% in order to only do five per minute. Now we'll just give ourselves some power lines. So I like to add two machines per power line and power pole and then you bring the other power poles down to feed two more machines only each pole will only do two and the other two slots will be to daisy chain the poles 
Now, if you don't want to use poles, you can use our wall outlets that we have gotten. And we'll most likely do that in the other floors just so that I can show you the difference. For the copper side, we'll do something a little bit different. We are going to set the first smelter to be coming again here, but then we'll skip one column for every smelter. Behind will be the same thing though. We'll do a splitter manifold line and we'll add some Mark 1 belts between the splitters and the smelter, but Mark 2 belts between the splitters themselves. Now again, it's overkill, but I like to have the consistency of the, the highest belt that I have in order to keep it aesthetically pleasing. Now you could add Mark 2 belts between here too, but I'm just trying to conserve our reinforced iron plates. What we could do here instead is just pick this one and then use a Mark II to go straight into here and that will actually mimic the other side. So that'll be a little bit more clean. And since we moved that there, we could use this middle one for our concrete. Of course, we'll need to use Mark II lifts. So this is all a little bit better now. In front of these smelters, we are going to want to add seven constructors. In front of every single one of these smelters, we'll add a splitter. And then we'll be able to belt from the smelter into the splitter and from the splitter into the constructor in front of it. For the first two smelters here that are on the right hand side, if you're looking at your layout, we can add a belt that will go to the constructor on the left side of it. Like so. We'll do the same thing on this splitter right here. Now between these, in front of the, behind this last constructor here, we're actually going to add a merger and we'll belt between these two splitters into this merger and from this merger into this last constructor. So we'll want to make sure to set all of these smelters now to smelt copper ingots. The first four constructors coming in from the uh, on the side of the middle here the first four heading on the right hand side will be doing some wires and then the last three will be doing some copper sheets now in front of the constructors we'll add a merger here in front of the third one from the middle with its output going forward here and then we'll add another merger in front of the fourth one here that will just send using Mark 1 belts into that merger. Then we'll belt the other, the constructors into those mergers. Then we'll add another three mergers in front of the last three constructors here. But the first one here will be having its input going to the front and the other ones will have their inputs heading into this merger. And then we can just belt all the mergers together and the constructors into the mergers here. Now in front of the second constructor, we'll add another constructor and then we'll add one right next to it. And from this merger, we'll add a Mark 1 belt into the disc constructor and we'll just belt straight from this one into here. We'll set both of these to be doing some cables, but this one here on the right, we'll want to underclock it to only do 15 per minute. So we're sending in 30 into this last one here. So we can only produce 15 per minute. So that's why we underclock it. And this one merges 230 together to make 60 wires that will be producing the full 30 per minute. And now all we have to do here is just add these two constructors together with a merger that will be facing forward. Now, all we have to do now is just give it some power. So we'll add a pole right here. And just a quick recap on this one. We are sending in 120 copper ore into a smelter array. The two right smelters are being split up into two constructors each for a total of four constructors doing wires. The one on the right will go straight into storage. 
while the other three are going in to be doing 45 cables per minute. And the last three constructors on the left hand side here are doing 30 copper sheets per minute. Now we'll add a constructor for the concrete's production. Lining up with the constructor here, but we'll leave two spaces between this merger and this constructor. And then we'll just go ahead and add the other three right next to it. We'll set all of these to be doing concrete. They'll all be running at 100% clock speed, so we don't have to worry about that. And we'll add a splitter manifold line here behind these constructors. Making sure the input is coming in from the left hand side. And then we'll just belt these together. Now we'll add power to all four of our machines and then we'll tackle the output. For the output, it's super easy. We are just going to merge all of these together and we'll send them towards the middle. And we'll just use Mark 1 belt for this merger line right here. And the last thing we need to do is use a Mark II belt to belt this belt into this splitter. So we can use the mouse wheel here to, to curve the road or belt if we want. Place it down and go straight into this splitter. And here it's just a simple four constructor array that we can use to create 60 concrete per minute. This is what it looks like so far for pretty much all of our basic iron and copper items. So just like we're bringing the output inputs in from this side, we're actually going to bring the outputs in the middle, but on the other side. We don't need to set this up running right away because we are still producing those items down here below. And I don't want to add the outputs just yet because we don't quite know if we are going to be changing anything for the rest of this factory. So I'm just going to leave it like that for now. And we're going to start working on building our second floor. For the second floor, we'll add four more pillars. This time we'll be bringing them to the corners here and we'll go up four. And at the top end here, we'll add a one meter foundation across the entire length and just like this now we've covered the entire floor and we can now work on bringing up our catwalk to this floor so here we'll take away the last catwalk i'm just going to add one that has a railing only on the one side and then we'll add some stairs going up twice and we're repeating the same process here except this one is not going as high so you can see here we're already at the right height so we're just going to add straightaways instead of stairs and we'll turn it around here and then more straightaways going up here. Now what we'll want to do is add the same floor holes all the way here and we'll take out the ones that we are reusing. And to figure that out, you could always take this out so you don't have to go down here. So we're already using this guy. We're already using this guy and we're already using this one. And we don't really need this one because we don't have one there yet. Now, if you had the materials, you could go ahead and bring these up, all of them. But right now we just, we, we will do that at the end. We'll just let our storage pile up before we go and plug everything together. Now for this floor, we are going to be doing both the rotors and the reinforced iron plates. So we'll need two iron Mark II lifts coming out here, like so. And we'll start working on the reinforced iron plate side. For the reinforced iron plates, we are going to add smelters for our array. We'll make sure to start here with the one that doesn't go out for the belts. And we'll add four smelters total. Then we'll add a splitter array behind the smelters with Mark II belts between each one of these. And then we'll just add Mark I belts between the splitters and the smelters themselves. The smelters will all be doing some iron ingots. And then we'll add a Mark II belt from the lift here. And we're going to line it up 
with the splitter array and just go straight into it. Now in front of these smelters, we are going to add a constructor. Whoops. Except we need to make sure that the making sure that the output is facing forward. And we'll add a total of six constructors. Now the first three here are gonna go straight into into the constructors, but the last one will go into a splitter. And we'll just add more splitters into a splitter manifold line that will head into each one of the last three constructors. Now the first three are going to be doing some iron plates and the last two will be doing the last three will be doing some cast screws alternate recipes. Oops. Now the very last one will need to underclock here because we only need 20 in this last one. So that will make a total of 120 screws. And in front of these constructors, we'll add a merger. The first one here will have its output going forward and the other two will have its output going left here. And we'll add a mark two belts between all of these and just mark one belt coming in from the constructors. We'll mirror this exact same setup, but this time, we're going to be heading towards the, the center over there. For the last bit, we'll need two assemblers. We'll just place two assemblers like that. One knot next to each other. And then what we can do is add a splitter on the bottom. We want to make sure we're two spaces away from these mergers. And then in this empty space, we'll add a double manifold line. So the way I do these is I'll put one down here for both of these. So coming in from this side and then we'll add three splitters, making sure the, the top one here, the input is coming in from the right hand side this time. Then we can remove the other two. We're going to do the same thing over here. And then what we can do is add a conveyor lift that will go from the splitter down into the assemblers. Then all we need to do here is add a mark one belt between the two splitters here and the splitters down here and those splitters into the assemblers. The final thing we need to do is connect our constructors into these assemblers. So for the screw side here, We'll add a Mark II conveyor lift, and then we'll have a Mark II belt go from this lift into this first splitter. And from the iron plate side, we are just going to add a Mark II belt that will go straight into here. Now, looking at this, I'm just seeing that I probably would prefer this to be just coming straight out, so we'll We'll just change it real quick. We'll have this output coming, coming straight here. And there you go. Now what we need to do is just is set these to be doing some reinforced iron plates. And then we'll merge the output towards the middle here. And we'll just add some power to all of our machines here. Now they're not connected to the actual power source yet, but that's okay. We'll be doing that later. So just a recap, we have 120 iron ore coming into a smelter array. The first three are going straight into some iron plate constructors, which are all being merged and sent off to the assemblers. On the right hand side here, the last smelter is split into three different cast screws constructors doing a total of 120 cast screws or screws per minute heading into the assemblers and these last two assemblers are doing a total of 10 reinforced iron plates per minute for the rotors we are going to do the same thing here for the smelters so we are going to start the smelters at the same level as the other ones 
and we'll just put four because we are bringing 120 into here then we can just put our splitter array behind here and again mark twos between all of these splitters all these need to be doing iron ingots and then we'll add a merger line here going towards the center And for this one, we'll have it facing this way for the output. Then we'll add some constructors. We'll need to add quite a bit of these. We'll need about nine. So we'll add the first one to be in front of these. And then we'll add until we get to right about here so one two three four five six and now we need to add three more so one two and three looking at this i just realized that this needs to be actually turned around we need to go have the output of this merger go this way so here we're going to add a splitter array behind here but we need to make sure that the input is coming in from this way so that we can place our line from the mergers to go straight into here and then we just need to repeat the splitters with its input coming in from the right hand side for all of these constructors and as usual, mark one between the splitters and the deconstructors and mark two between all of the splitters over here. And for these ones, we'll set the five left most to be doing some cast screws. We don't need to underclock anything here. These are all going to be running at 100% e efficiency or clock speed, I should say. And the other four will all be doing some iron rods. Now the very last one here will underclock because we only need an extra five per minute for a total of 50 because we have three doing 15. So that's 45 plus five. So that's 50 for the mergers. We're going to start with the third constructor here on the left hand side. And we're just going to, I'm just going to add a merger with its output facing forward. And then we'll belt using Mark 1 belts from these two constructors into this merger. Now we'll repeat that same thing, but this time we'll do it two more constructors down. And we just belt the other two constructors into this one. Now from here, we can add four mergers here for the other constructors, all going towards the right hand side here. And then we can add mark one belts between all of these mergers. So this is what you should have so far. For the outputs here, we are going to merge the first four outputs going towards the right here. And we can add Mark 1 belts between all the machines and the mergers. Over here, we'll add a merger and we'll skip one constructor here and then we'll add a merger. This time, the output going straight and we'll belt the two constructors here into this merger. And then we'll just mirror the exact same thing, but for the next two constructors. And this one doesn't need a merger. Then we'll add an assembler. The first one will be lined up with the first constructor here. We'll want to make sure just to line up that left input with the output of that. And we can go ahead and add a mark one line from here into there. Then we'll take the, assemb the second assembler and we'll line that one's second input with this merger. And we'll need to add a Mark II line between this merger and that assembler. And for the very last assembler here, 
we'll line up the first input with this merger and again add a mark II line going into it now we'll need to add a splitter manifold coming in from the right and raised up so we'll add three assemblers uh three splitters we'll take the bottom two down and then we'll add a mark one lift that will go into this assembler and we'll repeat the same process here and add a mark one line between the two splitters finally we'll do the exact same thing here for the last assembler now we'll add a mark one lift from this merger and we'll just go ahead and line it up here with the splitters we'll go back two spaces we'll click once and we'll just lift it up and from here we'll go into the splitter and we can go ahead and take that one out that'll give us a good 90 degree turn here up in the air these assemblers can be set to be doing rotors but the one that is connected to this lonely constructor over here we can underclock to two per minute for a total of 10. now what we need to do is just add a merger for this one we'll send it towards the middle so we'll add two mergers and add mark one lines between all the assemblers and these mergers all we have to do now is just add some power and these guys will be done and when you're done it should look like something like this so as a recap we're taking in 120 iron ore at the bottom and being smelted into ingots these ingots are going into a manifold splitter line that is feeding four constructors of iron rods and five cast screws constructors everything is at 100 percent except for the very first iron rod constructor that one is only running at 33.33 percent and the very first assemblers of rotors over there that one is only working at 50 percent and we'll just bring our line into here and then this will be done perfect the next thing we'll do is yet again one more level here so we'll go up four four meter high foundations and we'll add a one meter high foundation for the entire floor as you can see we've expanded our another floor we brought up the belts that haven't been used and we increase the catwalk up to the new floor and now it's time to deal with our modular frames for the modular frames we are going to start with eight smelters and these smelters are going to be again two rows in and we'll just do what we always do here We'll add mark ones between the between the splitters and the smelters now there is going to be a slight deviation here and this is because of the lack of mark three belts so we want to connect the first four together with mark two belts and then we'll skip one and we'll connect the rest together one two three four five six seven oh i forgot one eight okay so one two three four we'll remove this line right here and then we'll make sure that the other four are connected with mark ii belts as well perfect just like this now the reason for it is because eight requires 240 iron ore per minute now the only thing that can carry 240 is mark three belts mark two belts do not allow that and we don't have mark three belts right now so until we do we're going to have to split the lines up so what we'll want to do here is add a two mark two lifts like this then we could just go and bring a mark two line from the lift here all the way there straight like that perfect but for the other one what we are going to want to do in the meantime is just bring a line we'll rotate it like so and then we'll just head on over to where this one merges there and 
we'll just have it scooch in like this just for now later on when we have mark three belts enabled we can either merge these two or just bring up one line or whatever we decide to do but either way we can remove this extra thing here and just add a mark three another belt here so but in in the interim this works just fine for the mergers we'll merge the first four together here and we'll send it towards the middle and we'll make sure that this fourth one goes straight and we'll do the exact same thing for the other ones even though you technically don't need to use mergers you could if you wanted to we could have went straight into the constructors i'll explain that in a minute but i just find it that it looks consistent and cleaner if i just copy what i've done on the other side Then we need to add a total of 13 constructors. We'll start with in front of the first smelter over here and we'll leave one row worth of space and we'll just go and add 13 constructors. Now the first five constructors are going to be doing iron plates, but the fifth one is going to have to be underclocked to 50% in order to only produce 10 per minute. That way we'll have a total of 90 iron plates per minute. Now, because these are iron plates, like I said, we could have went straight from a smelter into here, but because we're going to have a splitter array going down this way or splitter manifold, let's say, I do not think it would look as neat to have one side be a, uh, a splitter array and then this one be like, just belts so that's why i'm doing it this way but either way technically works so we'll add our splitter array going this way mark twos in between so it looks consistent and then i like to add just mark whatever i need to go into the machines and then we can add our next splitter array going towards the right hand side for all the other constructors so starting from the sixth constructor for the next total of four we want them to be doing cast screws now the fourth cast screw constructor is going to have to be under clock to only do 30 per minute and the rest of the constructors, the other four, will be doing iron rods. And these ones are all going to be work at 100% clock speed. For the outputs, we'll want to add some mergers for the iron rods here. And we'll just have them come all the way to the outside. Like that. For the cast screws here, we're going to add a merger in front of all of them and they'll be heading out towards the right. So we'll do that for the next four constructors here. And in between the second and third one, we're just going to add a splitter with the input coming in from the left hand side. Now we just need to add mark two belts between all of these mergers. Oops, this should go a little bit further back and here like so and then mark one belt between the constructors and the mergers and that's it for the cast crews now for the iron plates we'll just merge everything and head towards the outside here but the last one should be coming forward for the reinforced iron plates, we are going to want to add three assemblers total. We'll make sure that the assembler's first input here is lined up with this merger and that we leave enough room for one in the middle. I'll actually bring this back a little bit because I just want it on the other side of this foundation line. There you go. And then we could go ahead and add the other two right next to it. In front of the second one in this 
empty row we'll add some splitters we'll add that for the first two assemblers now the second one will have to come from this side okay that'll be very important and we'll add a mark one line in between here and head them into the assemblers then from here we'll add another splitter but this time we'll need to raise it up and we'll make sure that the input is coming in from this side here and we'll add a mark two conveyor lift that goes from this merger into this splitter and then from here we can bring it back down into this assembler and we'll just bring it over to the other assemblers actually we'll have to remove this line add our assembler our splitters we'll make sure the input is coming in from the left here and we'll add a mark one belt to the splitter followed by a lift into the assembler and now we can bring back this line here and we'll do the exact same thing here splitter on the left hand side and add our conveyor lift going into this final assembler now from this merger of the cast screws here we are going to add a mark ii belt and we're gonna have it rotate and we'll want to rotate the belt so that it goes in the middle of the foundation here so you, it'll just go like this and then I'm going to bring this straight into this splitter that's in front of the second assembler. Now from this splitter that we have right here in between the two mergers, we'll just bring a Mark 1 belt and we'll line it up with kind of like that splitter. We'll go back two spaces and then we'll rotate it. And from here, we'll just line it up with here. Go back two spaces and then turn into the assembler. So these assemblers are now set up and we just need to set them to be doing reinforced iron plates. And we'll merge the outputs so that they can go towards the left to the next section. Last thing we need to set up is our actual modular frame assemblers. Now for that, We'll line up this assembler with the other ones and we'll make sure that the input is kind of like lined up here with this one. We're not going to send the belt in here, but it's just so that I can line things up all neatly here. And then we'll put in our four other ones for five total assemblers. We'll do the double manifold lines of splitters here. The first one coming in from the right hand side will be coming in from these iron rods. They'll go in here and then we'll add the first assembler to go straight there. So we'll add our splitters lined up with the second input from the assemblers, I believe. And then we'll just add mark one lines here. Now, before we add the other lines, we're going to do our double manifold line at the top here. So we'll have the input coming in from the left hand side this time and then have a lift coming down into the assemblers. We'll put a Mark 1 lift right here and then we'll bring a line from the reinforced iron plates to go into this lift. Finally, we'll just place our merger lines over here. Uh, all of them will be facing to the right for their outputs, except for the last one here. This one will face forward. And then we just place Mark 1 belts throughout all of the mergers and the assemblies. And this is the modular frame setup. We start with inputting two different lines of 120 iron ore. Each one is split into four smelters where we're producing a total of 240 ingots per minute. The left set of smelters heads into four constructors 
all doing iron plates. And the other smelters is heading down into three different products. The first constructor is finishing up the iron plates. And then the next four constructors are doing cast screws. And the last four are doing iron rods. The plates and the screws are being fed into three assemblers producing reinforced iron plates. And those reinforced iron plates are sent into five other assemblers with the iron rods produced earlier to produce 10 modular frames per minute. And for now, what I decided to do was just add a little platform here, a six by six on the other side of our factory. And I added a total of 10 storage containers. We'll uh, increase this and make this a little bit prettier later on, but this will do just fine in order to start stockpiling the items that we need in order to progress. And in relation to our factory, this is where I put it. So here for the modular frames, the only thing we're doing is taking a line from the output on the last merger over there and sending it to a lift. This lift goes down. On the second floor here, we actually have the reinforced iron plates and the rotors. Those, we're just bringing a line from those respective mergers and bring them over here next to the line that is coming from the modular frames. We're bringing in the lines for the iron rod screws and plates, and we're just bringing them all the way over there towards all our lifts. And the concrete joins them right here where they align up all nicely and then go down to the storage containers down below. And over here for the copper products, we're just sending all the lines here, as you can see, over to this side. Now these ones are not as straight <laughs> and I'll probably be modifying that later. But honestly, this section is going to be hidden later anyway, so we're not going to worry too much about it. And finally, you can see all the products. They all go down to the respective bins. And then we just need to get rid of all our machines here and have them go straight into our factory. And we make it look a little bit cleaner like this. So we first cleaned up the iron and copper section and then the limestone section. And then we're running belts down this little highway here and heading into the factory down below. While the reinforced iron plates are building up, what I did was I started building a highway here to the two pure iron nodes that are situated right here. And there's more pure nodes here in this area. So this is a great spot to highway to. Later on, I'll probably have some sort of truck station to bring all the goods from here back to our factory over there. Once I had the highway done, I just added some Mark II belts for each one of these lines, heading straight back to our starter factory. And now all of our ore is heading up into our factory right here. It's kind of looking kind of cool a little bit, you know. Now, something else I did was I added, I brought both our limestone nodes. So one's a Mark II and one's a Mark I belt, which is what we were using in our old concrete setup. And what I did here is in between the second and third splitter, I actually inserted a merger with its output going to the right hand side. And I added Mark II belts between the splitter and the merger and merger and the other splitter. I inject the Mark I line into this merger. And what that does is it gives us our full 60 per minute of concrete. Now you don't have to do this. You could just wait. If you just want one line coming up here, I would wait till you have Mark III belt. And then you make this whole line a Mark III belt coming from all the way over here. You merge these two into one big Mark III belt. But that is for later. And we might end up doing that later on. So here we have our three iron nodes. The first two are being merged into one line of 120 Mark II belt. This other one is just sending 60 down the highway here. Then we have these other two iron nodes merging for another 120. And finally, this last iron node is sending 60 down to being merged with the other 60 to make another 120. And they're all heading into our factory. And now you can see everything feeds down into these containers here. Now we are filling everything up. And in a later episode, we will have this overflow into an awesome sink. And we're finally making modular frames, 10 per minute. 
Now it is dark in here thanks to update 8, but hopefully next episode we'll be dealing with quartz and bring that all the way here and we'll be able to start making signs and lights and it will take some time for our system to saturate and start working at 100% efficiency but it will get there and that is thanks to how the manifolds work. I just put out a video on manifolds versus load balancers so I will link it down below if you want to know more. If you made it this far let me know in the comments. I really do appreciate you and and we'll see you in the next one.